Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to show you how I go about building easements or transitions into my curves here on the Piedmont Southern. You know, it adds a lot to the appearance of your long rolling stock, such as passenger cars like these here, as well as long steam locomotives, particularly uh, steam locomotives like 484s, uh, Challengers, any of those articulated locomotives that really swing when they enter the curve. So let's go ahead and take a look at how I go about doing that. Now, before I go on, I want to take a second to ask you to subscribe to the channel. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Also, don't forget, uh, give us a thumbs up at the end of the video if you enjoyed it. And that way, it helps uh, to promote the channel on YouTube. Thanks now. Okay, I've moved in here a lot closer so I can give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. Now, normally, if you have a couple of long passenger cars, like these uh, uh, dining cars here, as they are coming along a straight and start to enter a curve, you'll notice that they tend to lurch outwards, and that's simply because they're transitioning very quickly from a straight to a curve. And in this case, it's only a 36-inch radius curve. So that's a very wide angle curve to deal with. Now one thing that you can do is by simply changing the angle of the curve as you go from that straight into the curved section, it will greatly reduce that outward lurch or swing appearance. And it just makes your, your passenger cars and your long steam locomotives and even some of your uh, long E units, those kind of things, and the more modern diesels as well, it just makes them look a lot better because they enter the curve much more smoothly and it just looks that much better. So let me get these out of the way and we'll talk about how you go about doing that. Now I use a program called CAD Rail on my computer to design my entire layout. And the great thing about it is it has the ability to design these easement or transitions into the curves. And so I use that a lot. But there's another easy way that you can use uh, on your model railroad to build those easements into your curves. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at how do you go about setting up a curve. One way that's been used for a lot of years is to actually drill a couple of holes in a yardstick or a long straight piece of, of wood and uh, put a pencil in one end and put a thumbtack in the other end and lay it out on your layout and then you can actually use it to lay out the curve. Now, in a situation like this and on many layouts, that becomes very impractical uh, simply because you don't have that much room in order to lay out the curve. Now, what I do is, a number of years ago when I was building my last layout, I cut out a couple of these curve templates. This one here is a 30 inch curve. This one here is a 36 inch curve. So when I need to lay out a curve, I can just plop this sucker down here and with my magic marker, I can lay out the curve. It's very simple that way. And all you have to do is scrounge up a big piece of, of cardboard, lay it out on the floor, and using either the yardstick method or the piece of string method, uh, lay out a curve of 36 inch or 30 or 18 or whatever radius that you plan to be using on your layout, and then cut them out. Now one thing I strongly recommend, because I forget this all the time myself, mark which radius each one of these templates is. So this one right here, it says 36 inch radius outer edge. So it's this edge is the 36 inch. And I've done the same thing here with my 30 inch radius. You can see the center line marks the 30 inch radius here. So basically, that's how I lay out all of my curves here on the Piedmont Southern, and it means that I'm consistent. I've always got the same 36 inch radius or 30 inch radius or 28, whichever one that I want to use. I can just pull it out, plop it down, and mark it, and I'm good to go. Now, I've already drawn in uh, the, or the 36 inch radius here and here, and I've gone ahead and uh, transferred at least one section of the straight track 
through the town of Tai River running up to this curve. And you'll notice at this point I started to make dotted lines. And let me show you why. One thing I could do is I could print out uh, my track plan here uh, at full size and use it to lay out this transition curve. There's a simpler way to do that and uh, it doesn't involve a lot of math and calculating splines and this kind of thing. It's something fairly straightforward that John Armstrong laid out uh, a long time ago in one of his uh, design books, Truck Planning for Realistic Operation. And in it, in chapter 8, and this book, by the way, is still available from Kambach Publications, even though Armstrong has been dead now for probably 10 years. I can't remember exactly when he did die. But he shows in this figure here how to lay out easement curves. And he's got the data here for sharp curves, which in HO would be an 18-inch curve, a conventional curve, which would be 24 inches, and broad curves, which are 30 or larger. And he's got that information for N, HO, S, and O scale. So you should be able to uh, fit that to your uh, particular layout. So let's go ahead and, and look at what's involved here, and then I'll show you uh, how I do it. Okay, let's take a look then at what is involved in using John Armstrong's method in order to uh, create a transition from the straight line here into this curve back here. Now, the first thing you have to do is lay out your straight line or your curve line because the position of one dictates the position of the other. So, because I've already got my hole in the wall and everything done here, we're going to start with the curve. And I've already drawn that in. I did that a couple of videos ago. So that's my 36 inch radius curve that's going to go back to the helix. Then the next thing you want to do is you have to have an offset at the point of tangency. Now the point of tangency is where the curve itself is an approximately a straight line in relation to the potential straight line of the track, main line coming through here. So in other words, I've got my red line here coming around here, and then I've got, that's why I dotted in this blue line, uh, I've offset that by a half of an inch. Now if you look at Armstrong's table, he has different sizes or different offsets for each scale. So it's um, 3 eighths of an inch uh, for sharp curves, it's 7 sixteenths for conventional curves, and one half inch for our um, broad curves, which is what we're dealing with. Okay, so uh, what you will do then is, at this point of tangency, you're going to want to offset your main line coming straight through by a half of an inch. And that's to allow a transition to be installed between your straight line and your curve line. So that's at a half an inch. The other thing that comes into play here is the length of your transition. And for these broad curves like this one here, that is set at 18 inches. And in the table that I uh, was just showing you, he has these different lengths for each of the uh, curvatures. Okay, So we've got an 18 inch total. So we go back to our tangent point right here, drawn here, and then you go back 9 inches on this one and 9 inches this way. So that gives me my 18 inch transition. So that's how you go about setting that part up. Now, how do you go about making this transition curve here? Well, as, as Armstrong uh, explains in his uh, description of this method, you can take a flexible ruler like this one here, this yardstick, and set this up so that it lines up with both the curvature of the curve track and the straight section of our straight. And then, as you can see, um, it's already, I've already drawn in a green line here and you can see that. So you can go ahead and follow Armstrong's suggestion and use a, a meter stick or a yard stick and set this up, particularly if you've got somebody else that's available to draw the line for you. I don't. Here's what I do. This is a piece of bamboo that's left over from my uh, bamboo fly rod building days. And what I do is I go ahead and set this up so that I've got a... I'm going to pin this down to the top of the layout here, uh, right where 
it crosses the right on the blue line. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And that's going to pin this into place here. I've got to head these like this. And then we're going to want to come through the, let's see, yeah, there we go. Like that, there. And then we bring this on through to here. And this is the point here where we want to intersect with our curve. So what we have then is a transition curve set up by this piece of, of flexible bamboo running through the transition and into the curved section of the, of the uh, track. So at this point we can then take and using a magic marker just mark off that transition curve like that. Now let me take this out of here now, get the uh, pins out of the way. There we go. So now what we have is a green line running from our blue straight section of track here into the 36 inch radius curve going through the backdrop behind the layout. And that's going to be a, a, a continuous change in radius as we go from the straight to the 36 inch radius here. So that's going to give us a much, much smoother flow of our locomotives and our cars as they go from a straight line and into a 36 inch radius. And it's going to help the appearance considerably. You're not going to get that lurching effect that you commonly see with your locomotives and your cars as they suddenly go, uh, as they suddenly transition from that straight line into the curve. And that's what you want to avoid. So what I need to do now, before we can proceed with laying roadbed and track, is get the track plan set up here, transferred to the entire uh, area here that's Thai River, and get everything ready to go so that we can start putting in that roadbed and get our track uh, set up. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope I gave you a good explanation of how to do these easement curves. They are fairly straightforward. And if you don't already have a copy, go ahead and pick up a copy of John Armstrong's book, uh, Track Planning for Realistic Operations. It, you know, it's, it's sort of like the Bible as far as track planning uh, information goes. And uh, I look at it all the time uh, for my reference. So over the next week, I'm going to go ahead and start laying out the rest of the track plan here at Thai River. Uh, and uh, then we'll be able to come back and uh, add the roadbed start laying the track, the turnouts, and installing the cobalt switch machines that I showed you in a previous video. And I'll put a link up to that right here above me. So when you get some time, take another look at that uh, cobalt switch machine video. I've been very impressed with those when I installed them uh, on my reverse loop. And I'm really looking forward to giving them a real good tryout here on the uh, Piedmont Southern. So have a great weekend and we'll see you here next week with some more videos from the DCC Guide. Bye now.